Let's start with this one, the e-bike. It's basically a mountain bike with an electric motor. I don't know why they've dressed it up to be a bicycle. It's got gears and everything on it, and yet all I have to do is press that throttle there, and I just power away. I don't even have to pedal or anything, look. In a few months, you'll be able to buy an e-bike that you can use legally on British roads. But this isn't it. This is the American version. It has a top speed of 18 miles an hour. But they reckon that's too hot for us to handle. So our British spec one has been tamed down to 15 miles an hour. This little fellow is the Go Motorboard. It's like those micro scooters that have been so popular for the past few years, but it's got a very discreet electric motor hidden under the board. Do you know what? That looks like the best one. Yeah, it's, the, it's the easiest to use out of all of them, the smoothest. I mean, it's probably the girliest, but well, no, I, it's quite I, cute. It goes at a reasonable pace. I feel, I feel a bit, I feel quite cool about it. I feel a bit of an idiot just being on a bicycle and not doing anything. The e-skate may have a torturously trendy name, but this powered skateboard is actually a lot of fun, despite being the slowest toy we've got here today. You make it go by standing on the button at the front, and you make it stop. Well, I haven't worked that bit out yet. These two go-peds may be a bit pricey, but you do get a choice of petrol or electric. You also get disc brakes and a top speed of 30 on the petrol version. You do know these can go off road, don't you? Uh, I've heard, Susie. Shall right. we go as the crow flies? Follow me, let's give it a go. <laughs> oh, you know what? My batteries are out. <laughs> See you oh. later. Yeah, looking good, Simpson. Yeah, let's see to the experts. The wheelman is hardcore. It's nigh on impossible to ride, and even the expert who came to demonstrate it spent a lot of the day on the tarmac. It's been likened to riding a petrol-powered snowboard, which breaks your ankles every time you fall over. The throttle and brake are handheld, but it would make much more sense if they left both hands free to pray for your life. You'll be pleased to know we saved the most bizarre till last, the Segway and the Airboard. Do you know what I feel like? What? Um, like it's like a Zimmer frame for the Millennium. <laughs> I don't feel very cool. As the Segway neared its launch back in 2001, all the hype told us that the world would be changed forever and that a new era of transport was dawning. The weirdest thing about this is you've got handlebars that aren't for steering, you steer by a little collar here. Turn it left for left, right for right, and it is the most unnatural feeling, especially at high speed. When you want to turn, the natural thing to do is go like that, and then you fall off. Oh, look, I'm terrified of this thing. <laughs> the airboard comes from Australia. A petrol-driven fan lifted off the ground, and two rotating brushes drag it forward. To make it turn, you have to use your body. So you anticipate the turn quite early, and then pull back and lean into it kind of like that it really does look the business but it's actually disappointingly slow i'd want a little more speed and exhilaration if i was stomping up 10 grand and let's face it speed and exhilaration is what it's all about and so a day of testing all these devices could only really come down to one way of choosing our favorite a race eight well padded riders on eight expensive toys one lap of the karting track Place your bets, please. These gadgets are all great fun, but as day-to-day -day means of transport, they're useless. They're not quick enough for a start. And it's illegal to ride them on the roads, the pavements, indeed anywhere public. Just for the record, the petrol go-ped that I was riding came home first, but quite frankly, I think we need to look elsewhere for our ultimate personal transport.